Boston Celtics get the dominant game five win. They eliminate the Miami Heat in five games, and they needed this. They wanted it. They needed it. They got it. And I'm talking about it right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Bread, it's holiday season. Drop Drew in the mix, and three from KT. No, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zoo still being counts finest. Been a great team going up in the Raptors. Watch the seeds gain in locks on NASA. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from Dean White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they is all seeds nation. Rain and Jays, how we started raising business, how we finish. Locked on. Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I got you covered every day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts on the weekends when the Celtics play, but they're not playing this weekend because this series is over. The Boston Celtics eliminate the Miami Heat. They dominate game five, win by like 30. Uh, it was 34 at one point, so... Uh, I'm just here for you Monday through Friday this week. So make sure you're subscribed, get the podcast in your favorite podcasting app, watch the show on YouTube, get into that comment section. Let me know what you think. I'm John Corrales. If you're new to the show, I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics as a beat writer for Boston sports journal. Let's just dive right into this. I'll talk later on about the catharsis of this, which may be a little bit of an overstatement. I don't know that it was, uh, some big weight lifted off their shoulder, but they wanted this series. They wanted the Miami Heat, and they kind of needed to beat the Miami Heat. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But look, the end, end of the story, it's a 118-84 win, and the series is over. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. we got to talk more about Monopoly Go. And this fast-paced game lets you team up with friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. We love to taunt our friends. Download Monopoly Go now for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. So the game off for the Miami Heat. They are done. The Celtics dominate this from start to finish. Uh, it was an 11 point, uh, 11 point uh, tied, tied at 11. I know how to speak. I understand the English language. Uh, it was tied at 11 early in the first quarter. Then the Celtics whipped off a, a run that ended up doubling them up 32 to 16. And it was never a game after that. It was, it was basically they they went up by 16 and they stayed up by 16, 19, 20 something. Uh got up to 34 at one point. It was 30. And, you know, it just kind of like held firm. Miami made like a token run in the second quarter. And it started to get like a little, not uncomfortable, but we started to say, hey, you know, second quarter, you're up by 30. Don't let go of the rope just yet. And they didn't. So without Christoph Porzingis, we saw uh, contributions from Al Horford. Uh, we saw contributions from Luke Cornett, which was great. Uh, it started out with Jalen Brown and Derek White going off. Uh, and everybody had this, uh, everybody had a contribution that they made. Uh, dominant defensively is is one of the big headlines here. Uh, Miami hit three three pointers in this game. Uh, the Celtics. This is the stat of the series. The Celtics gave up twenty three three pointers in game two. It's the one outlier game. After that, in games three, four, and five, they gave up a combined. 21 three-pointers. So it shows you how much of an aberration game two really was. Games three, four, and five, 21 combined three-pointers. Part of that was Miami just never being able to get back to that same mentality, that the old habits of driving against the closeouts. And when the Celtics weren't closing out in game two, it was super easy for Miami to take those shots. When they were closing out in games three, four, and five, Miami just would never let it fly against the contests, not even a token contest. And that's that's part of why game two was so frustrating in a lot of ways because we knew, hey, 
just we knew that they were going to shoot a bunch of threes and it was just hey give them a token contest they can't hit they're not going to hit if you just bother them a little bit and boston in game two didn't want to bother them a little bit for some reason and it it cost them an extra game all right lesson learned and i think one of the most important things from here is that they did learn that lesson and change things from games you know to games three four and five and this is a this is a phenomenon i'm, I'm gonna get into this in that last segment because i don't think it's just as simple as ah boston reverted to their old selves and you know whatever they paid the price it's deeper than that it is deeper than that because i think it's part of playing miami and why they wanted miami and why they needed to actually have this kind of series against the miami heat regardless of jimmy butler Terry Rozier, uh, I throw Josh Richardson into that because, hey, remember Josh Richardson was on this team at one point, and boy, he would have helped defensively in this series. So uh, I know I know how shorthanded Miami was, and and look, that's that's why I said this series was going to end in four. If if Miami was at full strength, first of all, they wouldn't have been the eighth seed, right? And this might have been the playoff series, but if Miami was at full strength and they were healthy, they, they probably should be in the four five. Uh, or at least the three six series. So, whatever it's this is how it went, and Boston dominated this game five. Uh, it, it shows that growth, that maturity for the Celtics because I was a little bit I don't want to say worried, but concerned, uh, mildly concerned. I kept saying uh, I, I annoyed probably dozens and dozens dozens of people uh, in and around the Celtics uh, in the media by saying, I am not going back to Miami. I've said, I said on the podcast, I wrote about, I, I was adamant. I am not coming back here. I am not coming to this building anymore. I said it in that last podcast from the Kaseya center. I was just not willing. I, I don't even know if I would have went if this game went the other way, but no, nah, I probably would have. But I'm I'm glad that I I didn't. And their maturity, the the poise, the understanding that this is where you put your foot down. And Jason Tatum addressed that after the game, saying, you know, part of why he wanted Miami is like he knew that in that Atlanta series last year that they kind of let up, they screwed up, and they they let it go an extra game. And I'm not going to say that game two was that extra game. It, it, it's hard to sweep. So to, to beat a team in four or five, I consider that the win, right? I say Celtics in four, four or five. It, to me, it's kind of all the similar, right? An NBA team, it's hard to beat them four times in a row. So uh, losing that one, I, I think is, is fine. Losing two would have been like the issue. That would have been the biggest issue. Uh, I know I said Celtics were going to sweep. I won't even I won't even say gentleman sweep. I know people say like, oh, you win in five, that's a gentleman sweep. To me, the actual definition, the technical definition, just to throw it out there, of a gentleman sweep is to win the first three. And then, well, I'm a gentleman. I will give you a win. The other team wins game four at home, typically. And then that team comes back home and they win it in front of their home crowd in five. That is how the gentleman sweep came about. The gentleman allows the other team, well, look, we could beat you at home in front of your fans. We're going to gracefully allow you to give your fans one more win before you wrap up your season. We'll just do it in front of our fans if you don't mind. That's the gentlemanly thing to do. So I won't even take credit for the sweep in that regard. I was one game off. Big whoop. Uh, credit to the Celtics for getting it done. Credit to the Celtics for not making you sweat about this one. Credit to the Celtics for coming out, understanding this is what it takes against the decimated Heat team. Let's just do what we do. Let's do it really well. What are the two words that I came into the series saying? Methodical and ruthless. Game five was methodical and ruthless Celtics basketball because they just kept on coming, they kept on pouring it on, and they just kept doing what they do best. That's what Derek White did. Derek White keeps doing what he does best, and he had himself one hell of a series 
I'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app that you need to get last minute tickets, flash deals on those tickets, zone deals, uh, easy to find and buy Major League Baseball tickets. Now they are an official uh, supplier of those. And for every kind of event in and around your area, whether you're in the Boston area, you want to get Red Sox tickets, you want to get last minute tickets to maybe the Celtics game uh, next week, whatever it is, uh, a show, whatever. It's there on game time. There are last minute deals where you can save up to 60% buying last minutes for sports concerts, comedy, theaters, whatever, uh, theater shows, whatever. Flash deals, uh, in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or events. You just look. Maybe you you weren't even sure if you wanted to go, but the deal is so good, you got to go. Zone deals where you pick the section, game time chooses the seats. You can toggle all in prices so everything's up front. No surprise fees at checkout. You get the panoramic panoramic view from your seat. If you're watching me on YouTube and you clicked on a seat here in section 19, this would be your panoramic view. That'd be pretty nice. So if you got that seat, you'd be feeling pretty good about yourself. It's all there. Plus, your t- your purchase is picked uh, covered. Uh, if you get the lowest price guarantee, they they will credit you 110 percent of the difference if you find that ticket in the same section uh, in that that same area. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Lockdown NBA. You get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Lockdown NBA. L O C K E D Lockdown NBA. For $20 off, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24 7 on YouTube or the Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's all the biggest stories, all the biggest shows on the 24 7 stream on YouTube and the Amazon Fire TV channels app. This show makes it on there plenty of times because Celtics are one of the biggest stories. Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day, so go check that out. Let's get into Derek White, who had a monster game. He finished with 25 points on 8 of 13 shooting, 5 of 10 from 3, continuing a dominant series. Uh, He ended up scoring more points than Jason Tatum in, in this one. He averaged uh, over 22 points a game. Uh, Let's see. I have the numbers. I actually have the numbers right here. Uh, 22.4 points per game on 57% shooting, 47.7% from three. This This is what happens when the Celtics play, first of all, good defense, right? They... Allowed Miami the three 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 pointers in this one, and only two offensive rebounds. Two offensive rebounds. So Miami's not a big a crashing the boards team, but they uh, they they couldn't even muster up more than a couple of second chances. So that's that's a, a formula for winning. You you dominate that. You dominate the boards. You force the misses. That keeps them uh, from piling up any points. Miami was never going to score any uh, enough points to challenge the Celtics in this series. Boston's offense is just too damn good. And when you get those stops and you get out running and the team is cross-matched and they're worried about Jason Tatum and they're worried about Jalen Brown, then it opens up for other people. That's why I get so worked up when they play slow. Because when they play slow, the 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 result is it's only Tatum and it's only Brown as the option. Whereas when you play fast, Tatum and Brown are obviously still options, but Derek White is an option. Al Horford is an option. Sam Hauser is an option. When Sam Hauser is scoring 17 points, it's it's not a good day for the other team. Hauser had 17 points on five of eight shooting from three. And the way I classified it on Boston Sports Journal, Hauser's shooting is rarely just like, oh, here's a three-pointer here, and here's a three-pointer there, and it's randomly you know, snuck in. I feel like Sam Hauser's three-pointers, uh, more than any other player, are immediately precede an opposing team's timeout. Like, he is the run maker. He is the guy that, for some reason, the ball finds him time and time again. He hits a couple of threes, and it's, ah, timeout. We got to get a timeout because if Hauser's getting hot, 
you're you're done. You're toast. It's it, it, it's too much for another team. You're already worried about Tatum and Brown and all these other guys, and now Hauser gets in and he starts getting open looks. Then that's that that's where teams the Celtics start to pull away. That's what happens when you play fast, and that's what happens when you dominate on defense. You get these opportunities, and it's something that the Celtics are going to have to carry forward into these next rounds because no matter who they play, no matter what, you cannot play slow and get the kind of performance that you need out of these guys. The Celtics played at a, a good clip. They played with good physicality. They they matched the the heat, and they were able to run away with it. Uh, so Derek White had a big game. Uh, Sam Hauser had a big game. One of my favorite stats in this is that Jason Tatum only took nine shots and scored 16 points. And I love that because the Celtics can go out and I know, and I know this Miami Heat team struggles and, and they weren't, they, they weren't their best selves anywhere, anywhere close, but Jason Tatum getting only nine shots, taking only nine shots and the Celtics winning by, you know, 30 plus that's the, you know, 34, that's a, a monster. That's a monster performance for the Celtics without it, re, without relying on their two best players. They get 41 combined points from those two guys. Well, they get 35, 40, three from the other starters. So they they get the the additional performances from everybody else uh because Tatum is out there willing to give the game what it needs. And that that to me is a big deal. And that's part of it's kind of going to flow into what my next segment is. Tatum not feeling the need to be the hey, I'm going to score 40 cuz it's the closeout game and it's my turn, right? It's it's showtime, and the stars have to go out there and put up the big, big, big numbers. Jalen started things off like he normally does. Uh, he was being aggressive. I thought maybe a little too aggressive. He actually admitted after the game that maybe he put a little bit more on himself than he needed to. But the Celtics were able to draw multiple defenders create advantages and Jason Tatum to his word all season long the willingness to do the other things the willingness to say we're going to play the right way and the right way is not always for Tatum scoring 42 you know what I mean like that's it's not that Tatum can't it's that if Tatum put up 42 points in this game and tried to put up 42 points in this game that maybe this doesn't go down the road of 34 point blowout. Maybe it's a 15 point game heading into the third quarter, fourth quarter. Maybe it's a little bit different and it's close enough where a couple three pointers actually do fall for Miami. And now we're, now we're in a different kind of atmosphere, right? That's where this becomes a different story. And why somebody like Tatum who has the capability to do more is should be praised for his willingness to step aside a little bit and say, I, I will be the decoy. This wasn't a case of Miami limiting Tatum. This wasn't the defense for Miami saying like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to shut Tatum off and we're going to make them uh, make somebody else beat us. And Oh, I guess Derek white did. No, this was Tatum saying, all right, I will accept your double teams and I will gladly give it up. He didn't try to force it. He didn't try to put up, uh, you know, an excessive amount of shots. He took nine shots. So that's been one of Tatum's strengths all season long, and he showed it in, in this game. So let's get into this Miami catharsis, which, again, might be a little overstated, might be a little bit much, but but there's a reason why they, I, I put it that way. The Celtics wanted this matchup. I think they needed it a little bit. We'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show brought to you by Monopoly Go. And I know what you're thinking. Ah, timeout, John. 
you've already talked about Monopoly Go, but there's just so much good stuff in this game that we got to talk about it some more. You can team up with your friends in Monopoly Go for timed tournaments where you work together and build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more un awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much more to get. You can get unique stickers that you can trade with a friend to complete albums. That gets you big prizes. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting your friends when you're smashing their buildings or heisting their vaults. You go from helping them to smashing their buildings. That's fun. I wish I had more opportunity to smash my friends' buildings. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or, or Robot Pachinko Machines. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win, or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench. Go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Thanks for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown NBA. I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison of Lockdown Pelicans. Uh, but there's rotating hosts all week long. So go check it out. It's a fun way to keep up with the league. And uh, you catch me on Wednesdays and my thoughts on the NBA. Let me wrap up today's show with just a look at this, this catharsis. I wrote about it on Boston Sports Journal. And this this notion that the Celtics not only wanted to play Miami because Jason Tatum said, I wanted to play Miami. I think they needed to go through Miami. I think they needed to have this win and it didn't matter. It didn't matter if it was no, no Butler, no Rozier could have thrown me in a heat Jersey out there and they would have relished the opportunity to beat anybody. And, why? Because last year went the way it went. And this team has been such a nemesis for the Celtics that, of course, we knew they were going to face them. Jason Tatum said it after the game. was like, I knew when they were trying to figure out the schedules, I, I just knew that we we're going to play the Heat. So that feeling of we knew it was going to be them, let's just face it head on, that tells me that when they say they wanted it that also tells me that they needed they needed to feel something like different from that sting of last year being eliminated from the playoffs they needed something to maybe catharsis isn't the right word maybe just as a palate cleanser maybe that's the better word when jalen brown says i put a little too much on myself you know, instead of playing more comfortable, that's he, he's referring to the, you know, he, he didn't have a good series against Miami last year and he wants to, he wants to kind of make up for that. He wants to have a better performance. That game two in retrospect, when you think about the guys talking about wanting to play Miami the way they did, it, it shows me that game two wasn't just ah, a little bit of a lax defensive thing. Uh, oh, they did, you know, Miami took away uh, Porzingis and White and Holiday. I think game two was a little bit of a falling off the wagon for the Celtics that Tatum and Brown wanted to do a little too much on their own, that they didn't fully involve their teammates, that they played too slow because they were going to ISO and they were giving into the trap that Miami laid for them. And it was a little bit of the same old stuff. It wasn't a full relapse, but it was enough of a, a scare. It was enough of a, a dip back into their past that they, I think said, okay, look, we, we did this. We, we kind of reverted a little bit to what we used to be. And that didn't go well. Once again, playing that way and feeling like, okay, Miami is getting hot. We're going to, we're going to have to answer this because Miami is getting hot. It's up to us to do it. And when, when Jalen and Jason say it's up to us, we have to do it. That, that helps eliminate white and Porzingis and, 
and and Holiday. Now, obviously, they're not going to be with Porzingis for this next series. Although, side note, good news: uh, Chris Haynes was you know reported that there's optimism that that Porzingis could be back for the conference finals, which is perfect. This is exactly what we were talking about yesterday in the podcast. Me and Tom Westerholm. You don't need Porzingis against Cleveland. You don't need him against Orlando. The Celtics should beat both of those teams without Porzingis. It's not going to be as easy. Maybe it takes a little bit longer. I'm not going to sit there and say they're going to sweep. I think that's you know, this is going to be a hard series because Porzingis is out, but Boston is still a better team. And if they can win that series, then great. Uh, you, you potentially get Porzingis back for uh, the conference finals. But the Celtics, Jalen and Jason, kind of help facilitate eliminating these other guys from, from having big performances by trying to do too much on their own. So by, by having that game too, and I think realizing it and then saying, okay, we're going to, let's, let's continue with the game plan, the Joe Missoula game plan. Remember, Remember, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to play fast. We're trying to play this level of defense. We're trying to do X, Y, and Z. The Celtics, once they did that, are able to start putting behind them Miami's little mind games, Miami's little tricks. Because all they had by, you know, after game two was tricks. But you're, you're either going to put up 45 three-pointers and make half of them and, and have a chance to win, or you're not and you're going to lose like that was all Miami had at that point so the Celtics Tatum and Brown basically were forced to look at themselves in the mirror and say hey you know what we're, we're going to go back to doing we're going to do we're going to go back to doing what we were supposed to do rather than trying to do too much on our own that's how I look at it and by coming together putting that stuff aside, actually starting to ignore that stuff, embracing the fact that we wanted Miami, we got Miami, and if we're not careful, we're going to kind of let Miami do some things to us all over again. Once you embrace all that, that's when you can truly move forward. Once you can look yourself in the, in the mirror, once you can be honest with yourself and say, this is what the other team is trying to do, once you can actually – say this is how i'm i'm reacting to what they're trying to do and it's not good they're actually winning right now and you can you can adjust and go back to the things that you do best that's when you've truly fully embraced what joe Missoula has been saying where it doesn't matter there is no difference between the regular season and the playoffs even though we all know and he knows that there is once you embrace all that stuff, you can truly buy into that kind of mentality, that sort of Zen mentality that that Missoula has, that that concept of it doesn't matter if it's Miami or Cleveland or Orlando or Philly or New York or Denver. All all those different teams, all that means is you're going to have to do different things to win a, th that particular series. Because the game plan against the Cavs is not the game plan against Miami. And it's not the game plan against Orlando. It's different things. And when you can fully embrace that each game is its own thing, that each series is its own thing, like Missoula has been really preaching and hammering, when you can fully embrace that concept and truly give the game what the game is asking for, then you are a true team and you are ready to win a championship because this Celtics team needs to embrace that. Why else would Joe Missoula be saying it over and over and over and over again? Their strength is in their numbers. Their strength is in not just Tatum and Brown. Jason Tatum is an amazing basketball player. Jalen Brown is an amazing basketball player. But just those two guys doing it all by themselves is not going to win a championship. Those two guys doing what they do best 
and accepting whatever the defense throws at them. And if the defense says, hey, we're not going to let you two win, say, okay, no problem. You're going to double team us? We'll just take that double team and we're going to go back this way and we're going to go back that way and be like, oh, by the way, there's Derek White way over there. I'm going to now pass him the ball and nobody's around him and he's going to score on you and he's going to hit three straight buckets or he's going to swing to Drew Holiday and Holiday's going to hit a couple of buckets or they're going to throw a lob to Luke Cornett, who, by the way, shout out to Luke Cornett for just defending the hell out of Bam out of bio. I mean, he defend, he stepped up well. He stepped up, blocked Bam out of bio straight up. Uh, made Adebayo like a little nervous. Like Adebayo was up faking Luke Cornett. It, you don't up fake somebody if you don't think, like if you don't respect their ability to block your shot. So side note, shout out to Luke Cornett. But back to my point, if Tatum and Brown are willing to accept that stuff and do the stuff that's necessary to win and open things up for Derek White and for Drew Holiday and for all these other guys, that's where the Celtics are at their best. And they needed to play Miami. They needed to see that the way to beat Miami is to do something other than the stuff that you were doing last season because that's how you lost to Miami. Miami represents a lot. And the fact that they're able to put all of that stuff behind them after game two and have methodical and ruthless games, games three, four, and five, this tells me this team really, truly is different. And I really feel like this series has added something to that maturity level. I don't want to overstate it. I'm not going to sit there and be like, they've grown so much. But they have grown. They have grown. And it was important. I think winning the series the way they did was important against Miami. That was important. Now we wait. It's either going to be Cleveland or it's going to be Orlando. If Cleveland wins this series on Friday night, game one will be Sunday in Boston, Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock, I believe. If Orlando forces a game seven, no matter what, game one will be Tuesday night in Boston. So I say go Orlando in game six and then whatever. I might rather see Cleveland. They're the less physical team, I think. So um even though I don't want to go to Cleveland for a playoff series, but I will. And so I, I feel like, uh, whatever, we'll talk about that another time. We'll talk about that later because we have plenty of time. And if, if, if Orlando wins game six, we've got a lot of time to talk about that and plenty of time to do crossovers and stuff like that, which I'll do. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, I'll talk more about this game tomorrow. I think maybe tomorrow will be a mailbag. Well, a lot of mailbag questions. I haven't answered any mailbag questions in a while and don't get a chance to do that a lot in the playoffs. So johncorrales.com slash mailbag to submit your questions. Do that. If you're not subscribed, please do so. If you're not in the comment section of the YouTube page, where are you? Come on, get in there. Let me know what you think about how this Celtics game went, about beating the Miami Heat. And hello, Heat fans trying to cope. I see you. Oh, congratulations on beating the G League team. Yeah, you know what? Congratulations. You know, you guys can, whatever, go cope. All right, share the podcast, spread the word, tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.